Welcome to another video, Purple Political Talk here. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at the 2020 presidential elections as of October 1st, 2020. We're almost one month out from this presidential election. And in today's video, we're going to fill in the electoral map, look how the election stands today, and how the electoral map has maybe shifted after the first presidential debate. So before we get started, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications to be up to date with our latest content. So let's get started. So currently the Democratic Party is doing very strongly um, nationwide. I mean, in most places, they are making their margins go further from what they were expected to before election season. And truly, if this election season has taught us anything, is that one single event, in this case, the coronavirus pandemic, could truly change the course of an election forever. And I mean, there's sometimes that it's not that easy to come back. And for Donald Trump, the comeback from the big COVID fall, along with the Black Lives Matter movement, which really affected the president, um, all of that together, it's a hard comeback for the president. And all of that is coming to show when we look at the electoral map as of today, where truly the Democratic Party is essentially starting to gain more support in a lot of red areas, which before voted solidly red. And that's what we're going to see when we fill in our Republican safe states, that there truly is some states that usually end up voting red by a by a larger margin that during this election are voting by a severely less, even going into the contested columns in certain states. So that's truly something that's very interesting. Now that we're on the topic of states changing, when it comes to the first presidential debate, the impact on a lot of states wasn't much. However, certain states' margins of how much they go by might definitely change because at the end of the day, the debate was, I guess, a toss-up, I guess, on who won and everything. I think it's going to have little to no impact on this electoral map. However, it's still going to be a factor in at least a couple of voters' mind. So, overall, this is our starting off map where we have 94 electoral votes for the Republican Party to 194 Democrats, in this case, Joe Biden. So, let's start off by looking at seats where the Democrats are winning by a likely margin. In other words, a margin of more than 15% or more than 5% but less than 15 So, right now, they have a lot of those states. States like Nevada, Colorado, um, Virginia, New Hampshire... This points parts of the Rust Belt are all in the likely margin. Some of these swings, some of these seats could have been the closest states in this election. Look at the Rust Belt. But now these seats are severely going more and more and more for the Democrats due to Joe Biden's appeal to those voters and essentially the small margins Donald Trump won there in 2016. Since the margin was so tight in 2016, I would say, especially since we have an incumbent president, because Usually when it comes to an incumbent president, they get elected by a larger margin than, than what they get reelected in. So, I mean, if we look at it, it's not going to be very good for Trump if he won these seats that he necessarily needs to win to win the election. He only won them by 10,000 votes. 10,000 voters is nothing. That's 1% in a decent sounds county. So I think at this point, a lot of these states have fallen out of the reach of the president. Maybe not completely, but it's going to be tougher and tougher. For example, in some of these states, we have the suburban turnout, which has been pretty evenly split amongst Democrats and Republicans. This is an area of the country where it's very flip-floppy right now, especially with the Black Lives Matter movement and policing movement. That might change the mind of some suburban voters. However, Democrats do have a very big number of support in a lot of these likely blue states like Nevada, Colorado, and Virginia. Enough even with maybe like a smaller parts of the suburbs going for them, they still probably would win here. When it comes to the Rust Belt, again, it's mostly because Joe Biden has spending a lot of time and money here. However, I think it's also with President Trump's general unpopularity in certain areas of the country amongst certain groups of voters. Because there's groups of voters that like him, there's groups of voters that don't. So overall, I mean, this is a very strong starting off map for the Democrats with 248 electoral votes just getting into likely states. Um, if we looked at how the election was as of today. Now going on to the Republican Party during their um during their likely states um states from five to fifteen percent for the most part it's going to be a lot of these states that um usually tend to vote um very very republican or have tended to in the past and now have become states where the republicans have lost a certain amount of support for many different reasons 
Overall, I think one of the biggest things has definitely been increased minority turnout in areas like South Carolina and Missouri, where we're seeing the black communities come out and vote for the Democrats by a little bit bigger margins. Again, you also must take into account that Donald Trump has increased somewhat his support among some minorities. However, it's not something astronomical to change absolutely the whole election. In other states, it's just general Donald Trump's a little bit of unpopularity in Montana, um, in Kansas, and in Alaska. We have some liberal um, Republicans um, from that 1950s area like those ideologies have stayed in this in these states and you have a lot of liberal republicans which for the um like the republican party um sector that is the suzanne collins the lisa murkowski's these type of people who are the liberal republicans these are um where you would see some of their states main as well and i think right now these states and donald trump just goes a little bit too far um in those voters ideologies um, for some voters. However, Donald Trump still wins in these states. He has some drawbacks when it comes to winning some of these populations. However, he's still leading in polling a data and hasn't gotten closer than 5%. However, I think these states are very close to like uh, for comfort for the Republicans. These are states they should be winning by um, over 15%. And I think at this point, this just comes to show the Republican Party is in a tough place for this election. So now that those we filled in all the likely states um, for both the Democrats and the Republicans, Let's talk about some of the key lean states that fall between the 1.5 margin to 5% margin. So right now, the Democratic Party has a couple of lean states, most notably Arizona, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. These states are currently three states that are going to be deciding factors on this election. Essentially, for Donald Trump to win, he has to win at least two of these threes plus everything else on this map to win. Again, is it impossible? No. However, Joe Biden is a favorite to win in Arizona by around three points. He's a favorite in Wisconsin by around four and a half points. And in Pennsylvania, again, by four and a half points. Um, and those two rust states even going further a little bit, maybe, to the 5% margin. These states, I think, are those states, and maybe along with Michigan, that have definitely improved a lot under the Trump economy. Um, so I think that might be a little bit of a factor for them and might not lose as many voters from 2016. However, we still must understand certain areas of the Rust Belt still don't like Trump. And maybe those, a couple of the 10,000 voters could have definitely flipped by now. And I think with the polling data we do have and with women coming out excessively for Joe Biden in Pennsylvania, I think it should be without a shadow of a doubt um, a little bit harder for Trump to win here. And I think at this point in time, we're currently looking at a race in these states where, I mean, Joe Biden is just performing very, very well. And these states, they're, they're, they're closer and they're contested. However, for the Republican Party to win, they, need, they don't need to contest it. They just need to win these races. Contested is not going to cut it. And I think this shows us the disadvantages of Republicans come, come, have coming into this election when it comes especially to defending. They're defending a lot of ground. That's something we must understand. And I think it's essentially something very difficult to do. However, they have to deal with it. And I think at this point, we can see how this election falls. And in states like Arizona, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, Joe Biden is a leader because he can appeal to these voters. Now, when it comes to the Republican Party, they still do have their fair share of um, lean states. In states like Texas, Georgia, Ohio, and Iowa, which these states could be like a little bit more debated on where they fall on the spectrum of who's going to win. However, I think these states will end up voting for Donald Trump by over one and a half percent. A lot of the polling data we have, especially from Ohio um, and even Georgia, where it's been pretty conflicted with some Biden polls winning. So I think at this point, these states could fall anywhere from toss up to lean. However, I would be lenient to hear with Trump because I think, especially those states, he's going to be under polled a little bit. And I think with these states, they have such a strong Republican um, DNA. They have been voting Republican for years. And of course, that's really worth nothing in politics. However, these trends, when you see big changes and big trends, it usually happens a little bit over time. We are currently in that period of over time. We're not completely there. In states like Texas, Georgia, Ohio, Iowa, these are states that have solidly been trending Republican for a long time. They're, as of recently, 2018, in most, play, in most of these states, have been trending Democrat. So that's something we must understand. And I think... The, the, the there's um so a lot of analysts think that Biden has the momentum to win all four of these states. That's a possible. I would say that's the best case scenario. However, looking at it, we're currently looking at a situation where Donald Trump has pretty good poll numbers here. I mean, comparatively to where a lot of the other swing states are, and I think these margins again going down. We're seeing a general going down for Donald Trump. However, 
Compared to where the election on stood um, mid-July, mid-June, Donald Trump's in a strong place right now. And one month before the election, he's going to have to, Donald Trump, if he wants to win, the next two weeks are going to be extremely crucial if he wants to get absolutely anything done um, with winning the election. And these seats are going to be big parts of that. Trump loses at least one of these states, game over. Maybe Iowa, he can save it. But again, it's going to be tough for Trump to win. However, not impossible. So now that we filled in all the lean states, now let's just talk about um, the tilt states, which will be the states that will go by less than 1.5%. These are going to be the closest states in this election. And there's two states and two districts that would fall under this um, this um, classification, being Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District, Maine's 2nd Congressional District, North Carolina, and the state of Florida. So right now, we could say that the state of North Carolina, um, North Carolina falls currently under the tilt Democratic column, Donald Trump still does, he has his base here, however, just considering the fact we have polling data with Biden ahead, we have more college-educated voters fleeing into the state of um, North Carolina, we're seeing um, a lot of Democratic voters starting to move to the area, African-American turnout is supposed to be high for this election, we're currently going to see a pretty good effect for Biden in the state, where African-Americans is truly what decides it for the Democrats, and now that they have the Democrats a bigger base of voters from college educated voters that's even better for them because that makes it less hard for them to win there and i think right now we're looking at a race that's going to be close but probably around one percent for Pre by former vice president biden if not a little bit less now going on to the other state the state of florida right now this state is truly a toss-up I, if i had to call it i mean it would be by a couple thousand votes, maybe 10,000 votes, 20,000 votes. I mean, that's a little exaggerated, but I would say anywhere between the 25 to 75,000 vote margin, which is close for a very big state like Florida. Right now, I would say that it's close. I would say President Trump is going to carry the state narrowly right now. He's leading amongst Hispanics. He's doing very well amongst key blue counties, which might really be um, enough to... Um, overturn some of the felons and some of the voters, um, elder voters, which is something that we must see because remember, with the state of Florida, we have another big factor, which is are they going to let the felons vote? Um, because um, essentially Michael Bloomberg is currently in investigation in Florida due to him trying to pay the felons um, court fine so they could vote. So if 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 the court decides and uh, the attorney general decides. It's fine. He could do that to pay and let everyone so they could vote. The Democrats have a higher chance of winning Florida. However, if that does not end up happening, very well we could see Donald Trump winning by a lean margin because those Hispanic numbers and those blue county um, numbers in Miami-Dade County are just way too strong for Trump. And that's something we must analyze. And in the state of Florida, where margins are all what matters, I think that's truly going to be something very, very crucial for this presidential election. Now, lastly, going to the two districts, I think right now Trump is narrowly winning in Maine's second, while Biden's narrowly winning in Nebraska's second. So these states are going to be, or these districts rather, are going to be close. And they're pretty similar. In what, and then they essentially are the same version of each other, but I would say kind of opposites a little bit. So Maine's second congressional district is kind of a conservative district that tends to vote liberal. Um, sometimes, so of course, they oftentimes end up voting for the conservative, but sometimes they end up voting liberal. Well, Nebraska's 5th, 2nd Congressional District is truly a, a liberal district. However, liberals in this district only go out to vote when a very inspiring, moving candidate decides to vote. For example, former um, former President Barack Obama. So these districts right now, there's very little polling data we have, do have from here. However, I think it's um, pretty fair to say that these districts are going to be pretty close. And overall, this map shows us that Joe Biden is ahead of this presidential election. Electorally, looking at the Electoral College, not by much. However, due to his um, very big wins, I guess, or leading margins in states like Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, I think we might be in for a Biden presidency come 2021. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give it a huge thumbs up, like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications to be up to date with our latest content. Hope you enjoyed the video. And goodbye.